great. Uh, so hi there, uh, my name's Ruth and I am a fifth year medical student um, at Dundee and I'm just going to run through uh, whereabouts I did my elective. Um, so I did it at the beginning of fifth year in, in Papua New Guinea. So just a little overview of what I'll run through. Uh, I'll just chat about where I went, who I went with, what I got up to, uh, some of the challenges and some of the highlights and some advice for people in this call who are hoping to plan their elective very soon. So um, I went to Papua New Guinea uh, for my elective and for those people who maybe don't know, Papua New Guinea is in um, Oceania. It's just north of Australia. And so I was based in the north of Papua New Guinea in Madang province, uh, which is just by the coast. And I went there with um, YWAM ships Kona, uh, which is a faith-based organization uh, that are based in Hawaii, but they send um, ships that are, there's one based in Papua New Guinea and one off the west, off the east coast of Australia, and they help to bring, um, they help to reach uh, isolated communities with healthcare. And, um, but unfortunately uh, their ship uh, was missing a part and so wasn't um, operating while I was there and so all of our um, medical outreach was was land-based so every day we would travel to a new um, a new village or else another um, island like small island just off the coast where we would um, get there by a banana boat and so there's just a map down at the bottom just to show how far away Papua New Guinea is so I traveled um, from Belfast to London, then to Hong Kong, and then down to the capital of Papua New Guinea, which is Port Moresby. And then I got an internal flight from Port Moresby, um, which has the star beside it up to the north, uh, to Madang. Um, so it was quite a journey. And Papua New Guinea is known as the land of the unexpected. Um, and so there were a couple of delays um, along the way. <laughs> which you just grow to appreciate and enjoy these things. Um, so what exactly did we do? Um, well, so we provided primary healthcare. Um, every day we would go to a new um, location and just set up our clinic. Um, there is a medical administrator for YWAM who's based in Madang um, full time. And so she's been able uh, to build up um, connections with local like villages and schools and uh, like other um, centers uh, to provide healthcare on a regular basis. So um, Cynthia, who's in one of these photographs, is who's from Brazil. She was our um, our team lead who had been and um, then the other members of the team uh, varied uh, like throughout the year. But on our team, we had um, several nurses some of whom were retired so had years of experience and like wealth and like lots of knowledge and um, we had a couple of advanced nurse practitioners with them um, backgrounds in trauma which is very helpful for Papua New Guinea where there was there's a lot of uh, violence and a lot of like accidents happen with machetes and like falling from falling from coconut trees for example and another of the nurses on the team had um a background in pediatrics so she was great for giving us advice on any of the cases with the children um but on other teams throughout the year they have um dentists join them uh ophthalmologists optometrists and doctors as well um so it really it really varies and i was the only uh, medical student who uh, was part of the team uh, for the for the two outreaches that i was part of um, and so uh, our clinic locations varied dramatically from being open air to being inside of a, a church building. So as you can see, the photographs on the left and the right hand side uh, was from when we were uh, doing our clinic a local village and um, it was just outside. So throughout um, the day, we would just have to move um, our tables around so that we weren't getting uh, scorched by the sun and we sometimes had to dodge a falling mango from the tree as well and it also meant that there was always a lot of um, spectators looking on while we were um, doing our clinics 
and then the photograph just a uh, second from the right was uh, from another village trip where we were um, inside of uh, the church building uh, for the village and then we would make um, like makeshift rooms if there was ever any um, like more like intimate and like examination that like was required to be done so that there was a bit of uh, privacy as well for uh, the patients and uh, the modes of transport were an experience we generally traveled uh, on uh, like the backs of trucks uh, squeezed in as many people and all of our supplies as we could um, so that was always a bumpy ride and you can see some people holding on <laughs> so uh, the main health problems that uh, we encountered in Papua New Guinea um, malaria was very very common and um, as part of our supplies, we did have some malaria uh, like testing kits. So if anyone like presented with a fever or any other worrying like symptoms, we would do that test. And if it was positive, it would tell us uh, like which like type of malaria. And then we had um, with us some of uh, like the medication to give uh, to the people as well with um, instructions in um, in their language, which is talk uh, talk pidgin. Uh, so I had to learn some of that while I was there. Um, another common illness was scabies, which we don't hear about too often in the UK, but in uh, pigeon it's called skin scrub. And we would then uh, give them advice um, on how to treat that. And interestingly as well, um, some of their local like plants could be used as a more like herbal uh, remedy for scabies. Um, malnutrition was another um problem that we sadly had to face a lot of the time um and worms as well uh, which in top pigeon is called peck peck snake and so we would we had with us some of uh, the medication to get for that uh, back pain was another common problem mainly due to uh people's like work which is all outside and if they're um, in the fields and doing their farming they would be like stooped over a lot of the time and this causes like just a lot of chronic back pain problems. Um, and cough was another big problem, uh, which is kus in talk pigeon. And that's also like linked to how many people have their fires inside of their house to cook um, to cook their meals or, or to boil the water as well. Um, and that's just a photograph of some of their health books, a uh, health book. So it's quite similar to English um, in Wes. So it was um relatively easy to pick up some of um the language and I had enough um to help me through clinic so um our team lead taught us all all of uh, like the basic uh, like health phrases to use so that we'd be able to interact uh, with the patients and we always had a member um of the YWAM team who was a, a local guy who was able to help us out if there were ever any translation issues um, and so a typical day in Papua New Guinea, I'm not too sure there were two days that were the same because it is uh, the land of the unexpected. And when somebody says that they will come for 7.30, they might not come at 7.30, they might come an hour later. It all depends. Um, and so we had begin the day um, mainly by joining uh, the YWAM DTS team for their, wor for their worship or their intercession uh, times in the morning if we hadn't left already for the day. And so we would travel in various like modes of transport, generally trucks and um, arrive and set up. Uh, most of the time, uh, the villagers or uh, the other groups that we were going to see would be very kind and they would have uh, like already brought out some tables and chairs for us. Uh, so we would set up with our supplies and um, organize our, ourselves for the day, begin with the time of prayer together and then uh, just start seeing patients. And there would be two people on the team who would be part of registration, taking patients' uh, details, filling out uh, the YWAM ships like health form and doing all of their basic observations. Um, and then they would then go and be assessed more thoroughly by other members of the team who would, uh, we would try our best to use what we have and um, to help them. And if not, then we could refer them to the local hospital as well and uh, we would always have tuna for lunch had to grow to love tuna 
uh, there was a tuna factory close by called Dolly and there were many different flavours of tuna that I've never seen here in the UK. Um, but lunchtime was always a much needed break from the heat and the work. And then after lunch, we would uh, see the rest of the patients till there was nobody left to see. Um, one time when there was too many patients to see, we just decided that we should come back to that village for a second day. Um, but it really varied uh, the quitting time is because just depending on the size of the population, um, on my last week, we traveled to a very small island where there, I'm not too sure of the exact number of the population, but we had seen everybody that needed to be seen by 11 o'clock on that day, for example. Um, and we also had members of our team who were doing um, outreach and they were um, engaging with uh, the people and handing out some uh, Bible translations um, on SD cards for people to use and just uh, like praying with people and just getting them um, like to know them and they would also um, like play like, uh, like with the children and sometimes if we had a quiet moment or if we wanted a bit of a 10 minute break we could go out and join them for their um, community like outreach as well uh, which is just from that bottom right hand photograph um, all the fun that can be had from a skipping rope <laughs> And lunchtime, uh, the villagers were always very kind and uh, would sometimes like bring us like uh, coconuts or some other fresh fruit, which we were very appreciative of because of the of the heat. And we had come back uh, to the base, um, have our shower, have dinner, and generally just go off to bed because everyone would be so exhausted from the day, um, and just trying to prepare then for doing it all over again. Um, but there was also a lot of Monopoly deal played as well uh, between the members of the team who were from all over the world. So that was um, always very interesting. Um, some of the challenges, though, of the elective was being in a tropical country. Um, the heat was very, very warm. It was 30 degrees plus every day um, with lots of humidity. And there was a lot of mosquitoes, so it had to be on anti-malarial tablets. Um, and sometimes it was challenging just working with limited um, resources and knowing that if you were in the UK, that you might be able to help help this person out a little bit more. And unfortunately, in Papua New Guinea, um, there is just a culture of um, domestic abuse. And so when we would be... Um, chatting to patients to women who would talk to us about uh, what had happened to them that would always just be very hard um, hard to hear and just seeing how um, like accepted it is over there as well and just seeing as well uh, the levels of malnourishment too um, but there were many many highlights um, Mainly the people, uh, the Papua New Guinean people are so um, warm and welcoming and I've definitely left with uh, family members now like all over the world um, from Papua New Guinea and other members of her team are from Canada and Germany and America, just to name a few. And so that was a real highlight, just getting this opportunity to work alongside um older Christians who have so much wisdom but also older and um, like medical staff who are maybe now um, like retired and have so much um, knowledge and so um, I was able to learn so much from um, my team members um, in terms of faith but also um, like healthcare as well um, and just I guess having this huge blend of cultures and countries uh, was really special and another highlight was getting the experience all of the tropical food and um, I have a photograph there of me scraping out the inside of a coconut using uh, that metal device <laughs> which was very um, exhausting but when I was being taught by Kathy one of the one of the local ladies she made it look so easy and well I just tried my best but it was so nice to be able to try um, all the fresh fruit and vegetables and dinner time was always very interesting and we would always be so ready for a meal after a dead clinic um, and I think another highlight was just getting this opportunity 
opportunity to experience another culture and to be like welcomed into people's into people's lives and to be and um, like taken and like on a tour of their of their island and of their village and to be shown and like where they live and um everywhere was really really awesome um and Papua New Guinea is a beautiful country a uh, photograph from the bottom right is just from one of our banana boat rides out to an island so it was just really uh, spectacular it's a country with a lot of untouched beauty in it and uh, the seas are turquoise and lots of greenery and banana plants everywhere just similar to uh, Bronwyn's story as well and that's a photograph of a local house um, in the jungle um, and another highlight that I forgot to mention was how um, being with YWAM ships we had the opportunity to prayer with patients at the end of every consultation which is again something that we just don't have the opportunity to do in the UK at all and so to be so um open like in your faith um like while you're working was a real uh blessing and yeah I love that a lot and just some more photographs because I had too many to choose from um photograph on the left is a baby billum and so it's hard to believe but there is a baby inside of this billum and people would walk around with their babies on their heads and they can hang that bag up as well and it will just like bounce away I think it's a great idea <laughs> um, and the next photograph is just uh, one of the views from a clinic day where we were working at a men's rehabilitation center where men who have struggled with alcohol um, or drugs or homelessness they go and it's a center run by a Christian organization and they get taught skills such as uh, um, engineering or um, electrical work or gardening and farming. And it was such a gorgeous location uh, to be able uh, to work. And the next one, we had an overnight stay at a village. And this was our uh, bathroom facility while we were there. And these are some members of the team that I was with and honestly have left with many, many great friends. And um got to see some different wildlife from the UK. Um, these are flying foxes. Now the photograph makes them seem quite small, but they are actually very large and have a huge wingspan, and they would always come out uh, just at sunset. And the next one is Kokomo, who was um the bird based at our at our base, and he was a gift from a village, and he was always just hopping around outside of the house. He was great. He would sometimes try and like bite your finger, but he didn't have any teeth, so it was never too sore. And a, a, um, a phrase in top page, um, God M. Gupla, which is just God is good. And they would say, God is good all the time, all the time, God is good. And that's just another photograph from when we finished our clinic early at this island. And um, we were able to be taken on a tour. Uh, by some of the children who were so full of joy and just wanted us to see everything and they were wonderful and they were yeah just all of the smiles <laughs> and so I just thought it'd be helpful to maybe chat a little bit about uh, the cost involved so I went with uh, YWAM ships and uh, there's a lot of um, security when you do go with another organization just in terms of safety and um, Papua New Guinea is known to be quite unsafe and so I just felt more uh, reassured going with another organization and um, so as part of the YWAM fees uh, there's a registration fee and then they have a $26 fee per night which includes all of your food and accommodation and transport and so I was there for a total of five weeks and then there's also flights um, to consider, um, but your flights can vary depending on the depth that you choose to go and which airline and which countries you'll um, stop through as well. And then spending money for Papua New Guinea uh, was quite limited. We did have some time to go out to the market on the weekend, um, but you wouldn't need to bring that much because everything else has been paid. Um, um, for some um financial support three different organizations uh, christians and overseas service trust was one of them and not
which I would recommend um, for people to be able to look at if you're slightly concerned about finance, which is something that I was really worried about. And, um, yeah, but I didn't want it to um, so yeah, stop me from going to pass any further. But there are a few And so some top tips uh, just for people to uh, use the CMF website the staff will talk about later and just think about some practical aspects that would go into the local country suit you have you thought about the language and questions required pray about it um, I think that's probably the most important thing ask God just for wisdom and um, it's something that I really needed to do for Papua New Guinea and ask others for advice if you know anyone who's really see how they find it um, and before you commit to anything, do not be afraid to ask questions from the organisation if you choose to go through or through a hospital. And so early, these things can take a lot more time than you think. Um, and another is also don't let finances um, be um, from um, independence, which was on while I was in Papua New Guinea. So that was a wonderful day where we got to um, experience the uh, Papua New Guinean dance scene and from all the different regions. And it was wonderful to be there. And so any questions, feel free to uh, put them onto the Slido or send me an email. Unfortunately, I'm not able to stay around for, for the last q and session. Um, but if you do have any questions, just send me an email or ask somebody else and they can maybe pass it on to me as well and that is it I hope that was helpful